everything that the devil tried. I almost died overnight. And I mean that. I got all kinds of attacks in the physical and in the spirit. Yep. I thought I wasn't going to make it today. So when you saw me dancing, I was just not dancing for just to dance. I was dancing to thank God for the miracle. I don't know about you. He did a lot for me. And he continues to do that all the time. But yesterday night was different. But I'm here to tell you that I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Stronger than ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for those words. Thank you. Glory to God. I had a dream. And I, you know, about two weeks ago, I told my wife, I said, you know, someone told me in my dream that someone was trying to suffocate me in my sleep. And I woke up. So when I took that dream, I said, well, if somebody came to tell me that what happened, then it means I overcame it, right? Because the dead man can not hear a dream. So I said, at first I wanted to be scared. Say, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. I said, no, that's a message of promise. Amen. So you have survived it. We just come to tell you. I remember 25 or 30 years ago, I had a similar dream about my, my children. And I was at a meeting. And all of a sudden, this lady was speaking. You know, it was a conference. And we were all standing. And I just saw like a scene, as like I was watching the television. It was the angel and he said, I've come to tell you that the enemies try to kill your children, but we have won. Amen. That is not just for me, it's for you too. Amen. Whatever the enemy tried to do to you, no matter how hard you've been going, through anything, you won. Amen. You won. I don't care what it looks like. We won. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Connie, for the opportunity to be here this morning. Thank you for giving us this chance to, to speak to the congregation. Thank you for the love of God that is in you. Because the love of God shared the love of God wants to pass on knowledge wants to pass on the truth and it takes a great woman of God to let it go and say okay children you too can speak and share what the Lord has given you Amen. thank you appreciate that thank you God for my wife I've been married for, oh, don't let me get into trouble for this. <laughs> well, I know it's over 38, right? Oh! Look, it's past five years. It's long. How many is five? Uh, if you've been married five years, raise up your hand. Over five years. 40. Pump your chest. <laughs> how about 40? 40. No, I can't tell. So how old 43. Forty-three. Woo. Amen. We'll be forty-three this year. Amen. We started when we were five. <laughs> so, well, I, th I thank God for you. Thank God for you. Too. I thank God for just being there for me, because without that, I'm lost. But you know what? Jesus already took care of the, lo the loss. So you just following, you know, following him. And I'm glad that you're in my corner. I Amen. Love you. 
Can you tell your, your lover or your friend the same thing? Say, I'm glad you're still here. I'm glad you never left. And I will never, ever, ever leave you. You stuck with me. Hey. <laughs> All right. Let me get to the word. We're here to talk to you about the love of God. Isn't God awesome? Sometimes we think we know everything about love. But the more you look at it, then the more you realize that it's like levels. Level upon level. I thank God that we celebrate today as the day of love. You know, this is the day of love. This is the day that we should think about what love is. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for saving us up for this moment. I know there's somebody here who, even though today is the day of love, but they don't feel it. Lord, speak into their heart this morning thank you, Daddy. as we bring your message. Holy Spirit of God, do what you always do best. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, love. In my humble opinion, love is one of the most powerful words in the English language. However, our casual, constant, random use of the word has robbed it of its intense, deep meaning. I was born and raised in Nigeria, West Africa. And uh, Nigeria got its independence from Britain in 1960. It's funny, but like many other colonized nations, after its independence, Nigeria still retained some of the um, terminology and culture of Britain. And so I was raised in a culture where you don't just love anything and everything. So I'll tell Minister Kim, I like your sweater. I'll tell Pastor Connie, I like your jacket. I like specific kinds of food. I like to travel. But I love my mom and I love my siblings and I love my husband. So when you think about that and you compare it to the way we loosely love now, we talk about I love Bakabuk, I love chocolate, I love, 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 love. When God says, I love you, mm. I think it kind of has watered down. Even when a husband says to the wife, I love you, it just doesn't do the same thing, mean the same thing, feel the way that God intends for it to feel. If I told all of you right now, close your eyes, and I said, I'm going to say a word, and I want you to imagine, just bring imaginations into your heart of what that word means to you. And then I whisper, love. Then I tell all of you, okay, open your eyes, and I pick out a number of people, and I say, you share what imagery came into your heart. You share what imagery you got. You share what picture you got. Believe me. It will range from a dog to a cat to candlelight, uh, candlelit dinner, uh, dream vacation, all those things. Hopefully, it'll include parents and siblings and spouses. But you know what happened? These images that you're receiving are based on positive feelings that you have on the inside about these things and these people and these places. But feelings do not equate to love. Because 
feelings are really like chemical uh, 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 um, feel emotions that are released by the brain when the brain goes into like a memory bank and it looks at situations and experiences you've had and the things that you had good experiences with, the feeling that you get. Now we call it love. But love is not that. Feelings are so temporal. They're subject to change, and they can change that fast. So, what is love? Well, as children of the creator of the heavens and the earth and the world and all that's in it, I would think we need to go to the creator of all things to ask him, Daddy, what is love? And that's what I did. I said, Daddy, what is love? And he sent me to a scripture that I'd like to share with you. It's in 1 John 4, verses 9 and 10. 1 John 4, verses 9 and 10 in the New Living Translation. And it's, it reads, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. Mm. Verse 10, this is real love. Mm. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Wow. That says to me, and I hope it says to you, that we can't have a conversation. We can't have a topic. We can't have a discussion. We can't have a teaching about love without going to God. God is love. Love is of God. God understands love, and we need a deeper, broader, wider definition and understanding of love. We really do. The Hebrew word for love actually translates as more to give than to take. Isn't that awesome? Love and the Hebrew word means more to give than to take. The Greeks have four words that they use to define love. I'm sure you've heard them. Eros, philio, some people call it philio, philio, stargo, and agape. Eros is an erotic, sensual, sexual terminology for love. Eros is based on taking, but not giving back. Phrases that define errors go something like, what am I going to get out of this? If you love me, give me some. Phileo, on the other hand, refers to the friend kind of love. It's love that reciprocates. It's love that is defined in a phrase like, I got you something for your birthday. Are you going to get me something? <laughs> Stargo refers more to family love. Like Phileo, Stargo also reciprocates. But Stargo also has something else. It's based on obligations and expectations. So Stargo will go something like, what do you mean you're sick? What do you mean you don't feel good? You know your brother's in the hospital and he expects you to be there. That's Stargo. Then there's agape. Agape is the God kind of love. The kind of love that God wants us to show to him and to one another. Agape love is unconditional love. It encourages the lover to lay everything down without requiring anything in return. Agape love is not based on feelings. And that's why God expects us to love our enemies. 
Agape love also is the kind of love that God spoke about when Jesus said we should love each other as he has loved us. And I'll let you see that. That's in John, uh, what is it? John chapter 15, verses 12 to 14. I think I gave it. Yeah, praise God. John 15, verse 12. This is my commandment. Listen up. It's not an advice. It's not a suggestion. It's a what? Commandment. This is my commandment. Love each other in the way, in the same way that what? I have loved, I have loved you. you. 13. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. 14. You are my friends if you do what I command. And what did he just command? That we love one another as he has loved us. There's a, a Bible verse that always, 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 always touches me in a special way. And you all know it. It's a, it's a general Bible verse that literally someone that just got born again two weeks ago knows. And it's in John 3.16. I like to uh, read it in the uh, King James Version. John 3.16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I actually like to personalize it. Could you put it back up, please? I like to personalize it. So I like to say it like this. For God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son, that if I believe in him, I will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Let's break it down a little bit. God so loved. See the S-O next to the loved? God so loved. That lets us know that God's love cannot be measured. See, the word loved, it's past tense. You know, God goes from the end to the beginning. God is making it clear to us that he's loved us forever. He's loved us while we were yet in our mother's womb. He's loved us even before we knew him, before we understood about love, before we even began to know what it is to be loved. This also shows that God's love is sacrificial. He gave his only son, his only, not one of a whole number, his only begotten son gave to us. This verse also lets us know that his plan for us is everlasting. His good plan, his awesome plan, his wonderful plan. So it doesn't matter what you're going through is the key to this. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life today. It doesn't matter what you're, what, what you're dealing with. His love is everlasting. His plan is for good and not for evil. Amen. So I just want to say, if you ever found yourself in a gathering like this, where the speaker says, close your eyes. I want to share a word with you. You close your eyes and the speaker whispers into the mic and says, what picture comes into your mind when I say this word, love? This is the greatest desire of God's heart that at that moment, you and I will remember his gift that we will remember Jesus, that in our mind's eye, we would put our fingers into the holes in his hands, into the holes in his feet, that we will put our hand into the wound in his side, and we will believe. Believe what? We will believe that he did it all for us. He gave it all for us. Now that, my brothers and sisters, is love. Amen. No. Hallelujah. Now, 
we got to take it to another level. You know, Minister Toki just shared the basic of what God sees love to be. If you remember in the, I'm going to turn to John 21, please turn, turn, turn to John 21, verse 15 in the Passion Translation. You all know that I love it's up there. Passion Translation. There you go. This is a conversation that was going on between Jesus and the disciples. If you follow this story, if you read the whole John 15, they were at the, at the sea. Jesus had passed away, and he came. And he was, he made a meal, a fish meal, and he was inviting the disciples to come over and eat with him. And after, well, they didn't find, they were trying to catch fish, but they couldn't get anything. Does that remind you? That happened at the beginning of, the, of, his, of his ministry. Amen. They couldn't catch fish, and he helped them to make it happen. Now, this time, Jesus is doing the same thing again. Isn't that amazing? After three and a half years, the disciples were still where they were at the beginning. Can you catch that? They couldn't catch fish. You would have thought, hey, hanging with Jesus for three and a half years, you shouldn't have a problem catching fish. But they did. But anyway, that was not the real story. The story was Jesus, after having done that, he said, okay, throw the net to this side, and they caught fish. How many did they catch? Does anybody remember? It's a quiz. 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 I didn't listen. You're not the only one. It's 153. And every time I go there, I say, mm, what does 153 mean? But I'm not going to go into that today. The real reason why I'm saying this is Jesus started a conversation with Peter. He said, Peter, do you love me? Could you go, go back to that uh, verse again? He said, after they had breakfast, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you burn with love for me more than these? He said, wait a minute. No, uh -uh. he didn't say that. You made that up. King James said, do you love me more than these? But this translation is saying, do you burn for me? There's a difference. The reason is because the English language cannot explain burn for me with one word. So they just use the same word, love. But Jesus was saying, do you burn for me? Do you, would you leave everything for me? What did, what did Simon say? Simon said, yes, Lord. You know that I have great affection for you. Did you see the difference? Do you burn for me? He didn't say no, but he said, I have affection for you. If I sell, I just met a lady and said, you know, I have affection for you. I said, honey, I love you so much. I'll do anything for you. Which one would you take? Which guy you would you go for? The one that said, oh, girl, I have affection for you. Or the one that said... <laughs> I love you. I'll do anything for you. That's what Jesus was trying to find out. Do you really love me? And Peter never got it. First time Jesus asked the same question, that word was agapao, which we all call agape, but it's saying, do you, would you burn for me? Peter didn't catch that. He said, I'll have affection for you. Jesus asked the same question again. And guess what? Peter answered it the same way. Then Jesus asked it third time again. And that's when Peter caught something and said, okay, something must be wrong here. <laughs> Either he's not listening to me or I don't get it. But Jesus in the Bible did not tell us what happened after that. It just, well, he told us what happened. He said, feed my lamb. He told him, you know, kind of encouraging. What Jesus was saying is, look, there's more to just being affectionate towards me. You got to leave everything. You got to 
forego all things. You got to sacrifice. You got you got to be enthusiastic. You have to commit for you to say you love somebody. You can't just say, oh, I love you. I got to see it. You got to show. If you have a boyfriend or you have a husband or you have a wife and you don't see any sign of affection, you don't see any sign of commitment, you don't see any sign of joy, you don't see any sign of sacrifice. You ain't got nothing. Sorry for my language. Because just the affectionate part is just the passion side. It's part of love, but it's not enough. So Jesus is saying, would you do all of this for me? But let's move on. It was not until Paul, Apostle Paul, now came in his ministry and he broke love down a little bit. You remember Jesus said, everything now, I can't tell you everything, but when I'm gone, the comforter will come and he will share with you, will show you all things. Amen. Well, he came through Paul. And Paul is not trying to explain what love really means. That's when you go into the uh, First Corinthians 13. Chap chapter 13. But even there is not enough. Now, let's go turn to um, Ephesians. Ephesians is where Paul really broke it down. This is what he said. Ephesians 3, verse 17. It was, this is where Paul was teaching, I mean, he was praying for the people of Ephesus. And in his prayer, he was talking about understanding, knowing the love of God. He said that you may be able... He's praying. This is part of his prayer. He said that you may be able to comprehend with all saints. He said comprehend. What does, that, what does that mean, comprehend? Comprehend means you may be able to understand fully. You may be un able to grasp what love really is. Because just saying the word love, you really don't know it because there are dimensions of Amen. love. In actuality, Paul mentioned the four dimensions in this area. He said that you may know the, the dimensions of love. There is the length, there is the breadth, there is the height, and there is the depth. Amen. So when you're talking about love, which, which one are you talking about? Is it the length of it? Is it... The breadth of it? Is it the height of it? Or is it the depth of it? Amen. Are you following me? He said that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Now I'm going to read it a little bit further. He said, and to know the love of Christ which passed knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. In other words, what he's saying is when you understand the dimensions of God's love, you will have the fullness of God. Amen. Do you know what it means to have the fullness of God? And I'm not being heretic or anything like that. It says when you have the fullness of something, does, what does that make you? Like that thing. If you have the fullness of trash, you are what? <laughs> trash. <laughs> if all we hear from your lips is trash talk, well, guess who you are? Trash. If you have holiness in you, what comes out? Holiness. If you have the fullness of God, what comes out? God, are you hearing me? So, what are these dimensions? The first one is passion. That's the length. Passion, if you have a love relationship, whether with your job, your business, somebody, your church, whatever it is, if you have no passion, 
Would you continue to go to that thing? Check yourself. When you were dating, there were some guys that probably you met, you had a relationship with, and there was no passion, nothing. You know that didn't last long. <laughs> Are you with me? If you can't even have passion to start with, you ain't going nowhere. That's a hint for those of you who are just starting out. If, he, if, if you don't get a goosebump when the guy shows up, if you don't feel like, oh, I can't wait, he's not going anywhere. She's not going anywhere either. Passion is important in the love of God. It's a feeling thing. They, they just, don't think that there's nothing, that something wrong with having a feeling. The feeling, God gave us to feel. If you don't feel something, it's dead. And when you have feeling for something, there's always a pursuit. You're pursuing it. It's like a high. It's like, man, I can't wait to get, to get with my girl. I can't wait to get with my honey. Because what? There's something that... That you, it's, it's like you, you want to hide somewhere. So if you don't have it the same thing with God, there's nothing going on. God's pursuit of us, despite all our weaknesses, he did that with the people of Israel. There was one time he was talking to Jacob. He said, but now, O oh Jacob, Listen to the creator that made you. Amen. The one that formed you says, do not be afraid because I have ransomed you. Amen. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are mine. Yes. Now that's passion. That's God saying to you. In the Bible, it says he said it to Jacob, but he's saying it to you too. Amen. Said, you, you are mine. I'm telling my honey, honey, you're mine. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Tell your honey. Say, you are mine. I got you. <laughs> when you have affection for somebody, you're not ashamed. David was not ashamed when he was dancing in the street. That's a king, a king of the whole Israel. He was dancing so unashamedly that even the wife said, Oh, what is wrong with you, man? You're making me look like a fool. What did the angel say about the passion that God has for man? This is what he says in... In the New Living Translation, Psalm 8, verse 4. He said, why bother with puny mortal man? So what is man that you are mindful of him? I mean, he's, he doesn't even know his left from his right. The next time you know, he starts to create a, a, a mold and start worshiping it. And here you are, you're the king of the whole creation. And you're still mindful of them. Amen. The second of the dimensions of love is commitment. Commitment is the willingness to give your time, energy, and self to something or someone. You have to be committed. Amen. You have to be committed to the person that you have a relationship with. You have to be committed to the job that you're working at. You have to be committed to the business that you're running. You have to be committed to the church that you go to. Yes. Say amen. 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 There must be commitment because if there isn't commitment, you're just blowing smoke. I'm telling the truth. There must be commitment. It's an engagement or obligation to someone or something that restricts your freedom. You can't just do anything. 
can't say, well, I'm a born again now. I can do anything I want. No. Yeah, God gave you love, but you are constrained. Your love, he said, the love of God constrains. It keeps you focused on that thing, that person, that business, that life. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the third one. The third dimension of love is pleasure. See, God, a lot of times we think God just wants to be boring. But God loves pleasure. This is what he says in Psalm 1611. He said, because of you, I know the path of life as I taste the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right side, I experience divine pleasures forevermore. Amen. If somebody tells you that in regular English, you say, look, we're just going to have fun. I want to have fun. That's why they criticized Jesus when he was hanging out with the prostitutes and all the low lives, so-called low lives of his time. Let's call him a, a drunkard. Why? Because he was acting like he was drunk, laughing and joking. Do you see anybody morose and sober and they said, well, he must be a drunkard. No, a drunkard is all over the place, you know, like that. God wants us to have fun. Amen. In our relationship, don't think you're a Christian because you're looking so morose and so, oh, amen, Jesus is Lord. It, that's not God. You're just making that up. <laughs> what is God is you must be happy, happy in love. <clears throat> Sorry, even my mic is acting passionate. <laughs> Are you filled with joy serving God? Are you joyful in your relationship with your partner? Are you happy at your job? Are you happy at church? The Bible said, laughter doeth good. Like what? Medicine. Like medicine. Amen. There must be a time of joy in your pursuit of God. Most of the things done around, you know, they say Valentine's Day, it's just, there is nothing serious about it. It's just empty. There's no pursuit. There's no drive. There's no, there's no, there's no you know, commitment. No inconvenience. All right, because of time, the last one is a sacrifice. Say sacrifice. Sacrifice is one of the, is actually the noblest of it all in terms of love of God, the God, God kind of love. Sacrifice is giving up something valuable for the sake of someone or a better cause. It's inconvenient, it's painful, it's constraining. What are you sacrificing for? In your relationship, do you have any, have you sacrificed for your relationship? Look back in your relationship with your, with your loved one. What sacrifice did he make for you? What sacrifice did you make for him? If you don't find anything, mm. I'm sorry, doesn't look like it's going to last long. But it's not over, though. <laughs> it's not over. Amen. It's not over. <laughs> what I want to tell you is um, in order for us to be successful in the path that God has called us onto, the following of this straight and narrow way that leads to life. We need to have a clear understanding of God's perspective on things. Mm -hmm. Not the list of it being love, but the very essence of it being love. 
Remember, Jesus said, it's by this shall all men know that you are mine. The commands of God. Even uh, one of the um, lawyers was talking to Jesus. I wanted to know what is the most important commandment. And, and Jesus answered and said, it's to love the Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your will, with all your might. The lawyer said, yes, you're right, teacher. He said, and the second is just as important. All the laws and all the prophets, all the commandments, all boil down to this. Love God and then love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. But then Jesus took it to another level because sometimes we don't love ourselves. I remember I used to tell God that. When God would deal with me about my lack of love or my lack of commitment to certain relationships, I was going through a hard time. I was in a hard place. You know what I said to God? Well, you said I should love my neighbor like I love myself. I don't love myself, but that much. So I'm doing something. I'm loving them that much because I love myself that much. That was when the Holy Spirit took me to the verse in John 15 where Jesus said, now this is the commandment I'm giving to you, that you love that other person as I have loved you. Wow. Now that's different. That's a totally different thing. That's a whole new level of love. Because what did Jesus do? He loved us to the place where he gave himself. He took it all. The abuse, the pain, the suffering, everything. He took it all for you and I. Wow. That's how we're supposed to love. That's what love is. It's different. So don't give this excuse. Oh, I'm supposed to love you like I love myself. Well, guess what? I've done for you what I, I don't expect you to do any more for me. No. Would Jesus have done more for you? Did Jesus do more for you? That's the question that begs an answer. Many relationships and many marriages have been based on the arrows, the filio, the storge kind of love. And guess what? They've shipwrecked. Many of those relationships have become shipwrecked. And the parties in the relationship are still bearing the pain and the suffering. See, an arrow's love is based strictly on feelings. But like I said earlier, just feelings do not define love. That's not what God said. He didn't say, I feel so much for you. And that's my love. No. Love is an action. So someone who builds a relationship on arrows is just basically giving you the minimal. And it depends on how they feel. So that kind of, that kind of love basically doesn't have any commitment to it. That's what Minister Yemi was saying. He doesn't have anything because it's all about what I can get. If you've built your marriage, there are no kids here, right? If you've built your marriage on heat, so what is heat? It's that stuff that oozes out of your bedroom. Or if your marriage is based on licensed sex. I've talked to people who say, well, I married her because she told me she wouldn't give me some unless we were married, unless I put a ring on it. Mm -hmm. That's arrows. And you know what's going to happen? It's going to shipwreck. It will shipwreck. 
<laughs> because when that heat cools, so will the relationship. Mm. If your marriage is based on storge, you get to the place where you're all just doing things out of obligation. I'll do what's expected of me, and that's it. Don't ask me for any more than that. You need the love, the true love, the real love of God to be breathed into your relationship. And listen up. It's never too late with the Lord. It's never too late with God. Ever, 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 ever. We make mistakes, but when God brings a revelation, he also makes room for repentance. And he comes down low and brings us to himself to offer comfort. If we submit unto him. So if you're in this place today and you're hurting, you're dealing with pain and suffering from relationships that went out, didn't go the way you desired, the way you planned, the way you hoped. If Tuesday being a love day doesn't bring you any joy because you're brokenhearted. Minister Yemi is going to be opening the door soon. Of life. It needs work. It needs work. I've tried. I've tried. But it's not working. But it's not working. Thank you. Thank you. Breathe into my life. Breathe into my life. Breathe into my home. Breathe into my home. Breathe into my family. Breathe into my family. Breathe into my business. Breathe into my business. Breathe into all my relationships. Breathe into all of my relationships. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. I hand it all to you. I hand it all to you. And I trust you. And I trust you. And I thank you. And I thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord spoke a word through Minister Margaret this morning. And so we just want to open our hearts and just receive the love of God. And allow the love of God like, like plaster, like to... Just patch up all the yes. cracks, all the, uh, uh, the harm, all the hurt that has happened to your heart. And um, 2023, we just want to cooperate with God. Amen. That this is the year I'm not going to resist God. Yes. I'm not going to make excuses. Yes. We heard a message today that we are loved, that God has a passion for us. He's on fire for us. Amen. And, and, and so this is the year that we need to believe God to patch up our marriages, yes. to patch up the relationships with, with our loved ones. Yeah. And we're going to just receive the love of God. Father, we just pray. Just lift your hands. Father, we receive your love. Yes, Lord. We receive your love. We receive your acceptance. Yes. We receive forgiveness yes. from our mistakes, yes. from our mess ups, yes. how we've said things to people that we never should have said, yes. how we said things that we didn't mean out of passion and anger. Yes. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would just receive your love and receive your forgiveness right now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that today, is a new beginning, a new beginning. We receive your love. We don't make up any more excuses. You don't, you cannot love us any more than you do right now. So Father, we just lift our hands and we just receive your love. We receive your forgiveness right now in Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Heal us. 
Yes. Heal us. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. And God, we celebrate love this month. Yes. But we celebrate your love. Yes. Father, we can walk in your love. Yes. Father, I pray that these people will be anointed to walk in the love of God, God. Yes. from this day forward. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Watch I, watch I give somebody a hug if you don't mind, if you're still not comfortable Hallelujah. hugging. This is Love Sunday. Amen. That's right. Go ahead. Some of y'all give me your first hug. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Oh, you're welcome. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Oh, you have to do it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn me off. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take it off. Praise the Lord. Amen. Did y'all? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Glory to God. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Lord. Did you get anything out of this? I'm trying, I'm sounding like my pastor, my old pastor, my former pastor. <laughs> pastor Lamar would say, did you get anything out of this? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, we're not, we can't leave until we do something that is very important. You know, all these things that we talk about, we talk about the love of God, you know, how to get it, what it is, and the dimensions of it. But it really doesn't mean much. If you have not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, it really doesn't mean much. If you've had him in the past, but you walked away for whatever reason. See, it doesn't matter for whatever the reasons are. The point is, where is your relationship with God right now? And God is asking you that. Even as I'm saying it, he's asking you. Honey, do you really love me? It's still about love. Do you really care for me? Yes, you came up before, you stood up, you said, I give my life to Christ. Did you? Ask yourself that question before I ask you this. While you're silent, think about it. Now I want to ask you this question. Would you be daring enough? Would you be unashamed enough to come to a conclusion and say, you know what? I think I need to recommit myself to God. That, you know what? I've been dodging this issue for all these years. This is the day. I want to give my life to Christ. If you're that kind of person, could you raise your hand up? Don't be ashamed. There's no shame in God's love. Are you backsliding? It's okay. Well, you never received Christ. It's okay. This is a time for God to redeem you. Would you raise your hand up so we can pray for you? Search your heart. Is God that I really talk about, is he really in my heart? Or is he just in and out? Where are you? Where are you? Come forward so we can pray for you. All right, thank you so much. You have been notified. If you get home and you feel like you did not do the right thing, please go before God and give your life to him. He loves you. Thank you, Pastor Connie. Hmm? Oh, Elder Bobby. Where is he? Oh, well, Elder Bobby, would you please come and do the tithes and offering? 
Where is he? I can do it. Let me do it. Okay. All right. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us. Church, it's time for tithes and offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it is a good thing to give. We've been talking about love. Love, like Minister Toki shared, is about giving. You can never give enough. For those of you watching us online, please prepare your hearts and mind for tithes and offering. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for the ability to give. You know, some people do not have jobs. There have been a lot of layoffs. But don't stop giving. Don't stop. Because God knows what is going on in your life. And he promised that he'll take care of it. It's a generous God. This is what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading verse 10. It says, this generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant towards you. That, that means he does even more than that. He's an extravagant God. That's who God is. He's extravagant. He's not a poor man. You can't even measure his wealth. He said, first, he supplies every need. I'm reading... From the Bible. I'm not making this up. He said, first, he supplies every need, plus more. Then, he multiplies the seed as you sow it. Say, as you sow it. Say, as you sow it. He doesn't just multiply it if you don't sow it. You catch that? He multiplies the seed as you sow it so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. This is a condition. You have to sow. A, far a farmer has to sow before he can reap. You have to sow love to get love. You have to sow blessings to, to get blessings. Amen. Video ministry, could you please show us the many ways that we can give? Here at Living Faith, we have made giving easy by using electronic options as much as possible. You can text to give by texting LFCCNJ to 77977. You can give once or set up as a recurring gift. Just enter in your details, confirm your gift, and you're done. You can give through our LFCCNJ Church app. This method will look similar to text to give The iOS version of the app can be downloaded at the App Store, or you can get the Android version on Google Play. You can also give online at lfccnj.com slash giving. If these options are not possible, you can obtain a pink envelope and deposit it as you leave. We thank you again for joining us today. God bless you. Amen. God bless a cheerful giver. Are you a cheerful giver? Amen. Then God said he will bless you. Say, I receive the blessing. In Jesus' name. Don't forget as you go out to drop your envelope in the box, the two boxes in the back. Thank you so much for your giving. And God will, like he promised, multiply your seed.
in Jesus' name. So let us stand and let's make our confession unto God and say it like you mean it, like you mean it. because it's a confession that we're speaking into our lives and into the lives of those who are receiving it. Amen? Dear Heavenly Father, in obedience to your word in Malachi chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 7, and Matthew 23, 23, we come before you and before Jesus, our great high priest, to worship you as we bring the tithe and an offering. LFCC is our storehouse, chosen by you for us, where you place your name and where your spirit leads. Heavenly Father, we remember that we were in darkness and slaves to sin, but we called on the name of the Lord Jesus, and you delivered us and brought us into the kingdom of God. We acknowledge that you are our provider and our source, not our jobs, nor our bank account, nor the government, but you, Father, through Christ Jesus. Therefore, we are no longer limited by the world's economic system, inflation, economic depression, poverty, lack, debt, nor any other part of the curse as power over us anymore. We thank you that the windows of heaven are open unto us because we are tithers and givers. Therefore, you've rebuked the devourer for our sakes, and we believe we receive our blessing from heaven when? Now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stretch out your hands. Say, seed, I have sown you by faith. Now go and grow and be a blessing and then come back to me so that I can do it again and again and again and again. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Please welcome Pastor Ghani. Praise the Lord. Well, let's give uh, ministers Toki and Yemi a hand. Thank you for sharing that message on love with us this morning. Amen. Praise God. God loves us so much. Before we go, I want to um, welcome some special people. If you are a first-time visitor to Living Faith, we don't want you to say anything. We just want you to stand so that we can acknowledge you and greet you. If that's you and your first-time visitor, would you please stand? Anyone? Any first-time visitors? We have one. Hello, hello. Praise God. Praise God. A, a visitor over here. Praise the Lord. Hi. You know, um, we, we, um, we like to give our first-time visitors a prayer card. If our ushers are prepared to give them a prayer card, if you fill out that card um, and put in a prayer request, we will begin to pray. Our prayer ministry will begin to pray for you immediately. So if they hand you a card, please fill that card out, and we want to pray for you. Okay. Oh, amen? And when God responds to that prayer, we'd like to hear about that as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, February, no, let's show our video announcement. We have a video announcement. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And kingdom marriages have fun upholding the covenant of that love. Married couples, you are invited to join us as we celebrate with other couples on Friday, February 17th at 7.30 p.m for games, laughs, and fellowship. Light food, refreshments, and drinks will be served. The cost is $20 per couple. You can register online no later than Tuesday, February 14th. This event is open to all married couples according to God's biblical standards of marriage. For more information, please contact Minister Kim Chavis at 856-661-8110, extension 142. Praise the Lord. So married, married couples, come on out to that event this coming Friday, all right? And have some fun and fellowship, right, with, with your honey. So, and of course, this is headed up by Minister uh, Mike and Kim Chavis. 
or head of the marriage ministry. All right. Remember, we're calling February Love Month, so try to remember to do something extra special for somebody, even strangers, just to show them the love of God. It could start a conversation and end up getting somebody saved, you know, so let's just be open to opportunities that, that God will give us to show people his love. Amen. Our men's small group will meet February 25th, February 25th at 10 a.m. in the Kingdom Cafe Lounge. Amen. Also, the doors of the church are open. If there's anybody here who would like to join Living Faith, anybody here, you, you've been coming to Living Faith and you decided this is your church, that this is where you believe God wants you and has planted you into this, this family, this local church. Is that anybody here today? Anybody here today? Want to make Living Faith your church home? Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, well, if you change your mind, just grab one of our leaders, and they will um, tell you what to do. Amen? Praise the Lord. How many Eagles fans we have here today? We're getting we're ready to close. Well, you know, I was telling Minister Kim, man, maybe this was the wrong Sunday to wear red, because it doesn't mean we're Kansas City fans. And if it does, talk to the hands. No, just kidding. But, um, yeah, so we're looking forward to Super Bowl. So maybe some of y'all having some fun fellowships, even though most people are saying, Pastor, it starts at 630. We're going to be asleep by half, by half time. But, um, you know, so. But thanks for wearing red anyway, you Eagles fans. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. So it'll, it'll be interesting. It looks like they're both 16-3, 16-3 according to my phone, so it's going to be a close game, woo amen, all right, everybody, so have a happy Valentine's on Tuesday, amen, sharing the love of God and love with each other, so you can stand up, and we're going to close out in prayer, again, Minister Jimmy and Toki, thank you for the word of God, thank you for sharing, thank you for being available, thank you for preparing, and um, uh, just, you know, Thanks. Thank you for helping. Amen. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And most of all today, God, we just thank you. We thank you to hear, uh, just to be reminded of your love. God, you don't judge us. You love us. You love us just the way we are. That's not to say we don't have growing to do, that we don't have changing to do, molding and shaping. But God, you love us already. So, Father, we just thank you. We appreciate that we don't have to perform for you. We don't have to earn your love. We don't have to earn your attention. You just love us. You, lo you created us so that you could love us. Father, we thank you that every single one of us standing in this room and watching online, we are here on purpose. We were born on purpose and therefore for a purpose. And one of those purposes is that you could lavish your love upon us. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would all just receive the good things that you've prepared for those who love you. So, Father, we just thank you for all the good things that you've prepared for us because of your love. Father, I call all these people under the sound of my voice blessed happy, fortunate, empowered to prosper, and to be envied, because that's what you said, God. So somebody say, I am blessed. All right, I love you. Mwah.